The brick walls are there for a reason. The brick walls are not there to keep us out. The brick walls are there to give us a chance to show how badly we want something. Because the brick walls are there to stop the people who don't want it badly enough. That they're there to stop the other people. Randy Palsh. And Randy is exactly right. We talk about 10 to 15 minutes a day. That's what you need to dedicate to what we do to knock down those brick walls. We are here every single day charting this market, figuring out price movement. We use charts that are sophisticated yet simple. And we see them work over and over again as we do our practice trades and pay attention to the singularly most important thing that there is in the marketplace, and that is price movement. We use the price percent oscillator. We use the derivative oscillator. We use Bollinger Bands. We use Heiken Ashi candlesticks, trend lines. And every single day, we want you to be with us, practice, practice, trade, follow these charts, 10 to 15 minutes, study to show yourself approved, practice over and over and over. We have in the show notes for you for free. You can print out the PDFs of the Daily Market Worksheet, Weekly Market Worksheet, Trade Worksheet. Stick with us. Learn how this works. Let's jump into the markets. What do we see going on? Stocks are up for the day, but we see a down candle still forming. Now, again, we've not plumbed it down to the depths that we did in the prior week as far as the wick goes on the end of the red down candle. The body is further down, which is good. We're continuing to stair step down. Price percent oscillators pulling away from the red signal line. Derivative oscillators gaining downward momentum. It's been flat the two prior weeks. So again, that's looking good for continued down movement. Go to the two-day chart. What do we see there? It's not going down at the same strong angle it had been before. It's pulled back a little bit, but we have, and again, the prior candle finished drawing on Tuesday. This is just the first day of the latest candle, but it is down, again, not getting as far down as the wick had on the two-day candle, ending, uh, representing Friday and Thursday of last week. We want to continue to see things move down deeper, but it is moving down. Looks like, let's look at the low. The low so far, 288.66, the prior candle, 288.49, so it actually gotten a little lower prior. We'll see how that's reflected in the four-hour chart. And of course, what happened is we had that crossover going down in the afternoon, and then of course it bounced right back off things. Now, for those of you who jumped into a practice trade, there late in the day on Tuesday. Pay attention. Be ready to pull your trade if you violate your loss rules. At the same time, pay attention to what you see on the two-day chart and what you see on the weekly chart. You still have down movement on both of those. So let's see how these markets continue to balance out. Remember, you never into enter into a practice trade without knowing what your loss limit is and without entering a good till canceled sell order for your practice trade at the percentage gain you want to make. And you base that desire on several things, particularly how things have been moving lately gain-wise. How much of a move you've been seeing. Is it 2%? Is it 3%? And again, watching, waiting, planning, setting up your loss parameters and your gain parameters, your profit parameters. And again, you track all of that on your practice trades on your trade worksheets. That's why we give those out to you. They're in the show notes, so use them. Now we're going to leave the S&P 500, go to the NASDAQ 100. We see that it's a green spinning top so far this week. Again, means indecision tending up. However, our price percent oscillator is continuing to move down, actually at a steeper angle than the prior week. And the derivative oscillator is gaining downward momentum. That's good to see. We go to the two-day chart. What do we see there? We see two green spinning tops, indecision tending up. Price percent oscillator still heading down somewhat, uh, but the derivative oscillator is losing downward momentum. So things are weakening. And look, we've blown through the two-day trend line, which is not a good sign. 
we go to the four uh, for continued down movement. We go to the four hour chart, and of course, we never had that crossover occur. Saw it movement in the morning and the afternoon. So we'll again wait to see how things shake out with stocks. Crazy world, crazy times, politics, and all the other stuff is as it always does messing with the market. So we'll just continue to watch, see what there is to see as we enter in more into the fall winter trading zone. I'm hopeful that things are going to shake themselves out. Do remember, all market crashes occur in what month? October. Not that a crash is going to happen in October, but again, we practice to show ourselves approved. So we want to keep practicing, keep paying attention each and every day as to what's going on in the market. We're heading from stocks into bonds. Were you paying attention to bonds? We see that we have the price percent oscillator just barely pulling away from the red signal line. Looks like we're going into the second, well, the third week of up movement, second week after the weekly vertical crossover. But look at that, just still almost laminated. Derivative oscillator, however, still gaining downward momentum, and that price percent oscillator is ever so slowly pulling away from that red signal line, it appears. Go to the two-day chart. It's still negative also, even though the derivative oscillator is positive. We have a red candle, pretty much a spinning top, a very small candle, little wick on top, bigger wick on the bottom. Not much price movement at all on that candle. First day of that latest two-day candle. Like we said, uh, the bonds were the only thing down for the day, 0.58%. Go to the four-hour chart. What were we waiting for, friends? We've been waiting for it for quite a while. We were waiting for things to cross over, going down on that four-hour chart and looking for a jumping in point around noon. And I hope that those of you who wanted to short bonds were waiting for that and you've got a practice trade underway. We'll see how that pans out for us. After that morning candle closed, Hopefully, you followed that. You were waiting. We told you to be waiting for that. Let's see how that practice trade goes for us because that pullback may be over. Again, we'll keep our eye on the prize and see just how well that trade runs for us. Lastly, we go to gold. Gold up for the day, 0.11%. What's gold really been doing over the last few weeks since it topped back on the week ending the 6th of September? It's really been sliding sideways, maybe a little down, but really just sort of sideways. Derivative oscillators gaining downward momentum. Price percent oscillators pulling away from the red signal line. And we go from the weekly to the two-day. Two-day still heading down as far as the price percent oscillator goes. Candles are trying to move up, but again, everything is totally within the big down wick all the way back on the 30th of September. So again, first day of this latest two-day candle is a green open box candle, a small one. The wick on top, not anywhere even near the high of the two-day candle back on Friday the 4th of October after a red spinning top. Derivative oscillator still negative, price percent oscillator is negative. So again, we look at the four-hour chart. It's continuing to move up. We're waiting, waiting to see if it's going to rotate over going down. If it does, just like we were waiting on that TLT, 20-year bonds, hopefully gold will rotate over. We can do a practice trade going down in gold. Give you a chance maybe to practice some puts, buying some puts on gold in your practice trading, seeing how that works. We want you to give that a shot, okay? Do some paper trading on options, put options going, which of course means price going down. Give that a try on gold. It's hard to find an inverse fund that doesn't have such a wide spread in gold. We've talked about that in the past, but I want you to practice that. Give that a shot. If indeed we do see a rotation over on that four hour chart before the two day moves over going up. That could happen beforehand. So we'll wait and see what there is to see. Let the charts lead us. But right now, we are following that down movement in bonds on a practice trade. And those of you who jumped into SPY yesterday afternoon, keep a close eye on where things are on that practice trade. Folks, that's where we are as we end the day. You hadn't purchased our book. We have one waiting for you. 
have it waiting for you, signed and autographed, ready to go out. Follow the link in the show notes. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.